Hi guys, welcome back to Rancor Exotics, and today I'm going to be going into a herb talk about wild caught versus captive bred animals. Now, if you're new to the channel, please like, subscribe, and comment, all that good stuff. I do a lot of genetic, ball python genetic videos and care guides, um, and these herb talks where I talk about um, different things going on in the ball, uh, in the reptile community or amphibian or insect any any interesting topic you guys want me to talk about i'll cover um so like and subscribe all that good stuff so now now let's get to the meat and potatoes here captive bred versus wild caught i am very biased right off the bat captive bred superior animals superior you know everything if you have for some reason uh, to pick between a captive bred and a wild caught, always go captive bred. It's no brainer. However, let's give wild caught a chance with some of uh, some some things I brainstormed here. Wild caught has, I think, two distinct advantages. One of them is a fairly weak thing that might end up being a negative, uh, and one strong positive. So the weaker positive that I'm going to be talking about is. The animals usually come out cheaper. Um, the animals come out almost always cheaper than their captive bred counterparts uh, when you're buying them, um, which is a great thing, I guess. That way, uh, someone buying the animal has less of an en entry barrier to get that animal, right? Of course, that's not always a good thing. We'll talk about that <laughs> in a bit. However, that is one of the positives I could come up with. Second one is that it makes an animal that does that that is that has a very small breeding population in captivity. It makes more animals available to those people, to those breeders, to strengthen their bloodlines. I can imagine things like um, uh, satanic leaf-tail geckos and other uncommon types of lizards that are harder to breed um, bringing in new bloodlines is key to establishing a population in captivity if you have a large enough captive bred population that really doesn't need any more wild caught bloodlines then you know that it's set much like ball pythons and leopard geckos they don't need any new bloodlines to come in and strengthen them because those animals usually have strong immune systems and they don't need any more um, strengthening, right? So this is probably the main reason why wild caught animals are a thing to certain species, right? So that's the main positive. Now let's talk about the cons. The cons, one of the major cons is that the animals are cheaper. <laughs> I said that's a positive, that's true. However, if you're not a breeder, and you don't know how to treat a wild caught animal, um, that animal will quickly crash. Uh, we'll get into that in, an, in another little bit. So what do I mean by an animal being cheaper is a bad thing? So let's say a new person, a new hobbyist is getting into the hobby and they end up getting say a lizard, whatever, a swift or a, or a noli or whatever. Um, and they get an animal. The seller doesn't tell them it's wild caught. They assume it's captive bred or, you know, another animal. They don't know that $10 lizard or gecko or whatever they're buying is captive, is not captive. It's wild caught. And they don't know that $10 price tag that's put on the animal is just up front. There's vet bills, antibiotics, antiparasitics that need to go into that animal. So now that $10 animal, the care for that animal quickly increases several fold, right? And because this kid or this, uh, this newbie that got this animal uh, was unawares uh, that this animal was wild caught, or maybe they knew, they just thought they didn't need that medication, that animal will most likely suffer and crash and pass away. So even though an animal is cheaper up front, that is not always the case that it's going to stay cheap. These wild caught animals need attention and vet care to get well started, to get uh, get their f uh, to land on their feet. You know, 
because if you get an animal that's not that has infections or has or is parasitized then that animal will, will most likely suffer in captivity until it passes away a con another con for wild cod is that um, these animals are much more fragile they're very stressed out easily with human interaction and they tend to have failure to thrive and that is for whatever reason maybe they don't vibe with the enclosure they don't vibe with human interaction or they just don't vibe with being captives uh, they just crash and pass away that is a very real risk for any captive bred and uh, animal for certain species uh, were able to acclimate much better than others however you, the, you always run that risk All right. another con is that when you buy a, a wild caught animal you're buying a wild caught animal you're diminishing the wild population of that animal for you to have as a, a, as a pet now if you're have, buying that animal for the intention to breed again that's one of the positives you won't need to buy any more hopefully you won't have to buy any more of those wild animals because you'll have a new bloodline and that you'll be able to put that into your projects however if you're just trying to buy that animal that wild caught animal as a trophy animal and just show off for whatever reason um, then you are doing a huge disservice to that animal's population in the wild and there you're not really stemming the import of that animal like with the giant sun gazers really hard to breed extremely hard to reproduce so they keep taking from the wild population they keep taking they keep taking captive bred uh, no one's captive breeding and eventually that cap uh, that wild population will crash stopping authorities will probably stop in stop all imports of that species and that's when the black market kind of takes over and turns it into a bad situation right so if you really love an animal don't diminish their wild populations always have the uh, animals interest in mind when you're buying right and lastly for cons for buying wild caught is that there's no breeders to ask any questions about breeding said animal uh, with ball pythons corn snakes crested geckos leopard geckos there's hundreds of breeders you can ask the, the breeder you buy the animal from is always op available for questioning if they're a good breeder they always are available for questioning um, however you don't get that with wild caught animals right if you get a wild caught satanic leaf tail gecko you're gonna have to go through forums and hunt down somebody that does breed them to ask questions if you're buying a very unusual lizard or gecko that has that has very little information you're kind of on your own which kind of sucks um, so those are the big cons of wild caught let's talk about captive bred and why they're a superior uh, superior than wild caught in almost any aspect the first big pro of buying captive bred is that you're getting a fairly clean animal as in the the chances of that animal king parasites mites or other sicknesses are low of course you always want to background check your breeder make sure they have good reviews if they have the uh, youtube videos and they show off their racks and snakes and animals and they're not scared to show you what their animals look like and live in then you know that breeder is putting himself up to a higher standard and you, that breeder will most likely not lie to you about what they're selling or uh, the quality of the animals they carry so right away you're buying a nice healthy animal like I said always do your background checks but almost 99% of the time it's a healthier animal next is that there's a breeder there if you buy from a breeder you can always ask questions if you have questions about the animals genetics um, they're there if something if the animal doesn't look like what it what you bought it for like say you buy a ball python and it doesn't have a particular gene that the breeder said it had you take pictures you guys communicate and you can come to a compromise maybe he'll cut you a deal on another animal or maybe he'll reimburse you some money um, that's you know up to you and your breeder but you know someone's there to answer questions and be responsible with you right Next is that you're buying, avoiding buying wild caught. If 
heaven forbid, your ball python or your other animals uh, pass away for whatever reason, um, it will have no bearing on the wild populations, which is awesome. And when you go out to replace those animals, um, you will not be taking uh, wild caught animals. It will be completely captive bred and it will have no tangible effect on the outside world, which is awesome, right? Next best thing for captive bred is that these animals are usually more tamed out. Um, I know this is really true for things like Tokei geckos. I know that second, third, and fourth gen uh, generation Tokei geckos are more used to people and they're more um, more accepting of interactions with people. Uh, they're more likely to be okay with people handling them and they won't tear your face off and hate you. Um, and that's true for a lot of animals. The, the moment an animal is born in captivity, they're not really exposed to predators and other things like that. And they very quickly understand that human interaction is not dangerous for them in any way. Um, so these animals quickly ten, tend to quickly tame out, which is a huge plus. If, especially if you're handsy like me and you love holding your animals, then you know it's always a plus. Next is, um, the, the animals are usually much more hardier and they are more easily, they're more, they find it easier to thrive. Um, there are a lot of animal species that when they were first brought in from uh, imports and after, you know, dedicated breeders put in time, passion, and they established a captive, bred group, captive breeding group and, you know, generations down the line, these animals they had you know where they were you know maybe they were prone to certain illnesses however with captive breeding and um uh more sterilized environments those captive uh, those um uh, wild caught imports quickly uh strengthened themselves additions of more bloodlines from other locales or you know um more um frequency more uh more available uh, male to female interactions, you know, just increase their populations, um, you know, manage to really strengthen strengthen out their bloodlines, increase their immunity, and things like that. So, at the long run, um, captive breeding really does produce stronger, more healthier animals. So, things like the dragon snake, which is one of my dream snakes, with uh, thanks to dedicated efforts of certain breeders that are really passionate about the animal, they're able to establish captive breeding groups that will produce, hopefully down the line, much more hardier examples that will be easier for the common Joe to keep and hopefully reproduce themselves, right? If you can get dragon snakes and get their habitats down and get them to breed animals that are more likely to eat rats, um, then it opens up a, a great animal to the to the reptile community to enjoy and of course since there's a captive bred hardy animal you won't need to buy a dragon snake that's been wild caught and will most likely die within the week right so that's another plus the um, captive breeding produces hardier more sturdy animals right Lastly, um, it's that you're helping out breeders, right? So I know a lot of I know a lot of times when I go to an expo, there's people selling a ten dollar Tokei gecko, and then there's people that put in lo their love and dedication into Tokes. They love Tokes, and they produce a fifty dollar captive bred individual. When you make the decision that you would rather pay a premium for the captive bred individual. You're rewarding that breeder saying, even though this animal is more expensive, I understand that you put all of this effort into this animal and I uh, appreciate that and I want that. Um, so you're helping out usually a local breeder, especially if you're buying from an expo or you're buying locally, um, you're helping somebody out in your, in your own community, letting them know that someone nearby supports what they're doing right and it kind of puts a damper on people importing animals of course there's plenty of people still buying that ten dollar gecko because it's cheaper however hopefully they 
can get educated and find out that cheap things are usually more expensive in the long run, right? So I think captive bred individuals and captive bred um, reptile keeping is the way to go. Unless you're a dedicated breeder and you want to strengthen your bloodlines, there is no reason really to buy wild caught. If you're an importer and you want to buy a bunch of animals, um, usually they expect to find a certain amount of them dead when they come in. So I don't think that's really humane. Um, so, you know, it's up to you whether you support wild caught or not for whatever reason. It's always up to you, the consumer, the buyer. Um, so hopefully this has been a little entertaining and informative to you guys. Always buy capped bread if you can. Wild cod shouldn't really be an option unless you're a breeder. That's my thoughts. And that's end of Herp Talk. If you like the episode, please like and subscribe. Um, I come out with videos twice a week or three times a week depending on what's going on. And thanks for listening. Thanks guys.